Hi and welcome to this Leaving Cert Higher Level Applied Maths video. In this video we're going to look at a previous exam question. So this question is from the SEC Sample Higher Level paper and it is question 6. A learner driver is practicing driving around a roundabout. The motion of the car may be modelled as horizontal circular motion around centre O with radius or and constant angular speed omega, as in the diagram above. Write an expression for S, the displacement of the car relative to O at any time T in terms of or omega T, and your expression should use the unit vector vectors I and J. Note that T equals zero when S is along the I axis. So this feels like a very complicated question, but actually what they're asking is relatively straightforward. If we look at the diagram, they're basically asking, write this point in terms of I and J. OK, that's literally all they're asking. This point in terms of I and J. Now, we know that to resolve anything, we can write it as the magnitude cause of the angle i plus the magnitude sine of the angle j. So that's our general formula. And the few bits we need are, well, what is the magnitude of our displacement? So because it's going in a circle, that is always going to be equal to the radius. That is its length. So that we're going to sub in for or. Now the angle. So what is this angle here. So let's think about that. So we have an angular speed, which is omega, which is radians per second. So then we want to understand, well, what is that in terms of an actual angle? So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply omega by time. So that is, if we think in terms of our dimensional analysis, that is radians per second times seconds, which gives us radians over seconds times seconds, which is literally radians. Now, I know dimensional analysis, we don't put in our radians, but it's just to understand how we're getting back to an angle here. So that means in order for us to write our displacement vector, we have or cos omega ti plus or sine omega tj. And that is measured in M for meters. So part two then says, derive an expression for V, the velocity of the car at any time T. So we have from part one, we have already worked out that we have or cos omega Ti plus or sine omega tj from our knowledge of distance v time and rates of change we should know that velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time so what we're being asked to do is differentiate this vector with respect to time now differentiating a vector is quite straightforward we differentiate the i part and differentiate the j part so we're differentiating cos, but it has omega t. So we're differentiating with respect to t. So omega is effectively a constant. It's like a three or a five. So what we get is cos becomes minus sign. So we have a minus or the omega, which is the constant, comes out in front. And that gives us minus or omega sine omega ti. I know this can be tricky because the lack of numbers, but think of your omega as the constant. And the reason it's a constant is, well, first of all, they told us it was a constant angular speed. But in terms of differentiation, we're doing it, we are differentiating s with respect to t. t is the thing that changes. Everything else will remain the same. So then here we get plus, again, sine is going to go to cos. But it is, think of your chain rule, you differentiate as normal, multiply by the derivative of the inner function. That is our constant. So we get or omega cos omega tj, and that's meters per second. 
So that is our velocity V. So then it says, use a dot product calculation to show the car's velocity and displacement are always perpendicular to each other. So in order for these to be perpendicular, so if S is perpendicular to V, then the dot product of S and V should equal a zero. So let's get our two vectors here. So S was or cos omega t i plus or sine omega t j and our v minus or omega sine omega t i plus or omega cos omega t j and how our dot product works so if we want to get the dot product, we multiply the i coefficients together. So that's cos omega t. Remember this is also called scalar product, which means we do not put in the i. Omega t plus, it's very really important, that's a plus, and then the j components together, or sine omega t plus or omega cos omega t. Now tidying that up it gets us minus or squared omega cos omega t sine omega t plus or squared omega. If we want this to be clear let's write the cos first it's multiplication. Multiplication is commutative which means the order we multiply doesn't matter so you can write it cos and then sine or sine and then cos it really doesn't matter but writing it this way allows us to see that we have two identical pieces but one is a minus and one is a plus so they effectively give us a zero so therefore we now know that the displacement will always be perpendicular to the car's velocity. So part four, show that the acceleration of the car is always directed towards O. So this one is probably the trickiest. So the first thing we need to understand is they're asking us about acceleration. So when we talk about um, rates of change, we have S for displacement, differentiate that gets V, differentiate that again, and we get A. So remember, we have these pieces. So what we want to get A is we're going to differentiate V with respect to T. So I'm going to just put my V here so we have it handy. It is minus or omega sine omega T I plus or omega cos omega T J. So we're going to differentiate each part. So we end up with sine, sine differentiates to cos, so we end up with minus or, and then we get an omega squared, cos omega t i, cos differentiates to a minus sign, so we get minus or another omega comes out, so omega squared, sine omega t j. So that's our acceleration. Now, what we want to do is show that this is always directed towards O. So it's got to do with the sign. So think about what we knew to begin with. So displacement was always directed away from O. Think of how we worked with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out that minus and the omega squared and I'm going to leave everything else. And that's going to look somewhat familiar to us. Um, and then or there, sine omega t j. And what I've got now in my square bracket was actually our displacement s. So we get minus omega squared s. So s pointed away from O, look at our diagram, therefore minus omega squared, the omega doesn't really make a difference, it's the minus, when we multiply that S by a minus, 
um, which is actually acceleration, points uh, towards O. Minus means opposite direction. Opposite direction. So really be clear about what that minus means with our vectors. So part five, derive an expression for the maximum velocity the car could have as it travels around the roundabout without slipping. Your expression should be written in terms of R, G and mu, the coefficient of friction between the car and the road. So this part is really circular motion. Let's take a look at our car. So imagine this car, you're either looking at it front facing or from behind. It has a few different forces. So it has our weight, which is acting down. And weight is going to be in terms of the mass of the car times gravity. And then working back up, we have reaction. And because there's no movement up and down, we get a reaction or equal to the weight which is mg and then moving towards the center of the rain weight, so i'm looking face on at this car we have friction so that's what's keeping this car moving in a circle and for friction we have the formula mu or so that's mu times or which in our case is mu times mg so mu mg so because of the way the car is moving around the roundabout, our acceleration is moving towards the center, is a centripetal acceleration. So that is there. So in order for us to do a force equation, we're really only dealing with friction. So we have F equals MA. The acceleration is towards the center. So we take friction as positive. So mu um, G is equal to mass times acceleration. Again, we're talking about circular motion, so we have two options here. The question asked about the velocity, so we're going to put V squared over OR in for our acceleration. And we're going to then see that we have an M on both sides. So then we're trying to derive an expression for the maximum velocity. So we have taken this um, when everything is working such that there is no slipping, it is at the point where it will one one little bit extra in the velocity and it will kick it over the edge. So we effectively just want to isolate our V here. So we bring our OR across. So we have mu OR G and then V is equal to the square root of mu OR G and that's meters per second. So the last example in this video is coming from our sample paper. It is question six, part VI, and it is thrown into the middle of a question. And it says, use dimensional analysis, show the unit for the expression you de derived in part five, which I've given to you in the orange box, are equivalent for the units of velocity. So we're trying to prove that this is going to give us meters per second. Okay, so the formula was the velocity max is equal to the square root of mu g or okay and they what we want to do there's one thing here we haven't seen yet so let's fill in what we know so velocity it doesn't matter if it's a min or a max or if it's nothing it's just a velocity it's meters per second we have the square root now mu mu is interesting so mu comes from the formula friction equals mu or and mu is called the coefficient of friction. So mu, if we rearrange that, is friction divided by or, which is reaction. Now, think in terms of our units here. So friction is a force. Reaction is a force. So again, what 
this is, is it's a ratio. It compares two forces. So our coefficient of friction might be like a half or a third. Like it doesn't come with the unit. So there are no units for mu. It is a ratio. This, the whole idea of dimensional analysis and being able to work with it is really good because it helps you. If you're stuck, if you're kind of caught with something here that we haven't looked at for dimensional analysis before, with your understanding of the course, because it has to be linked to the course. If with your understanding of the course, you should be able to break down and understand what are the units or maybe it doesn't have a unit and that's absolutely fine so mu has no units because it is a ratio our gravity a g is m our acceleration g to gravity times or which is our radius which is m so that is meters per second this cleans up to be meters times meters so meters squared per second squared and then to square root that square root the top square root the bottom and we're left with just meters per second.